All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, Lizzie and I are here today to talk about uh, non-discoverable devices uh, behind a PCI device, on, which is discoverable. Uh, I was supposed to be there in person, but uh, somehow I got the conference called before the conference. Anyway, uh, so what's the problem? This this is something that's uh, come up from time to time. Um, it's actually not just PCI, but today we're just focused on PCI. Um, but modern PCI devices are more than just a device. Uh, there's a whole can be a whole slew of devices with contained within it. Um, and the discoverability is um, somewhat limited in, in PCI. You have the vendor ID and device ID and and not much else to go on. Um, and in some cases, what devices are in there is not even fixed in the case of FPGAs. Um, so we have solutions for how to discover non-discoverable stuff. Um, and one of the things is we want to re be able to reuse existing drivers for those sub-devices. And we need a solution that works for both the uh, device tree and that other uh, firmware interface, ACPI. <laughs> So there, there's been a variety of uh, <clears throat> devices and use cases that have uh, come up over the last couple of years. Uh, this is a somewhat complete list, I think. Um, first is uh, AMD's FPGA uh, based PCI cards. Um, Lizzie's going to talk about that in a second. Um, another one is uh, Microchip has a Ethernet uh, switch SOC um, that can be a PCI endpoint or or run a, a standalone SOC. Um, there's a testing framework called Road Test uh, that was submitted a while back, um, and they were trying to do platform devices behind a VirtIO PCI device. Um, Greg saw platform device and basically uh, uh, killed that until I pointed out that uh, MMIO devices in device tree are platform devices. And we used to have that separate and combined it. And anyway, they went on with a different solution, I think, uh, for that. Um, no, uh, Jonathan Cameron, uh, I think he was in the room earlier. I can't see now. Um, has a use case with testing CXL. Um, as I understand it, it's uh, adding. Someone trying to talk or? No. As I understand it, it's basically adding uh, BMC <clears throat> SOC devices into the emulated host directly rather than through, uh, through the BMC interface? Uh, Rob, I can add a little more detail on that. This is a more general sure. thing for Kimu that if we want to mess around with should we say a, a weird mixture of a standard platform and pluggable devices, and we don't want to build a board model, then it's awfully convenient to use the fact there's a PCI adapter um, and then add, add stuff to that. So basically, it gives us a pluggable interface to standard board in Kimi, is the side of it. Right. So a weird mixture of discoverable and not. Yeah. And the, the last one is uh, probably more a hobbyist, uh, deep embedded kind of use case uh, with FTVI serial chips 
some of them have I2C and SPY and GPIOs hanging off of them in addition to serial. Um, so you could have anything on that, on those interfaces, and none of that's discoverable. And then say you want to plug in multiple of those to your host. What do you do? Um, that's not PCI, but it's still a similar problem. Now I'll turn it over to uh, Lizzie to talk in more detail about the FPGA PCIe card. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, uh, my name is Li Ji Ho, and I work for AMD. Uh, so uh, today I just uh, um, introduce our uh, our will PCI device as a, a use case uh, for this topic. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, you might be already uh, familiar with this uh, modern device structure that uh, our device uh, expose uh, multiple uh, hardware peripherals. Um, and they work together to finish the job. For for uh, for example, we uh, our card con uh, contains a uh, uh, DMA engine or maybe UART and other devices, and uh, uh, each of the uh, hardware peripherals uh, work independently. Uh, and it, 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 uh, most of them already has a driver in the uh, I mean platform driver in the Linux kernel, and uh, we want to uh, leverage that. And also, um, how to access this uh, individual uh, power peripherals? Uh, those are being exposed on the PCI bar. So, as long as you map the uh, PCS uh, uh, to the CPU uh, access uh, to the IO map, then you can use the existing driver to uh, access those uh, uh, peripherals. Um, that's the whole. Uh, picture and also we are uh, as rob mentioned uh, our card is also a uh, uh, fpg uh, car a based device so it's partially reconfigurable that means uh, even with the same card uh, if you reprogram uh, a different fpg image on the card uh, then it can be uh, become a very different uh, however uh, look at the picture uh, the card uh, initially has a function, uh, has a profile A and B exposed on the bar zero. But later on, if you program another uh, IPG image, uh, the location of A and B can be uh, different and it can even add a more hardware um, profiles like C uh, exposed on the bar. I think Rob will flip. Oh, okay. Slides Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, based on this, uh, how our uh, facts? So, uh, we definitely need a, a data-driven um, uh, profile discover uh, to discover this uh, uh, non-discoverable uh, device exposed on the bar. So, as I mentioned, already mentioned that can be. Uh, different FPGA being programmed on the uh, same RVO device. That means uh, PCI bar numbers and size may be uh, the same, but the, the profiles uh, exposed on the bar can be very different. And uh, uh, the images, uh, the different images can be all just a, a bug fix or change a little bit uh, things. Um, so it it is not feasible like you can, um, hard code something in the driver that won't be scale. Um, and also um, consist, considering all these facts, so instead of uh, uh, introduce uh, another way to describe those uh, profiles, profiles uh, we think uh, why don't we just uh, leverage the directory which is very uh, mature and uh, uh, being acceptable in the uh, Linux world. So, uh, what we did is uh, uh, when we, the Howard team generated the FPGA image, uh, there is a, a device tree a section along, uh, actually inside the FPGA image. Uh, so to describe uh, those uh, profiles um, in, uh, uh, in the image. So uh, currently we are still uh, using an Altree 
driver which do parsing or create the um, platform devices by the driver. But assuming uh, this effort um, is success, then there is a, a device tree node for the uh, Avio PCI device, then we can leverage all those uh, cool uh, device tree functions to just uh, overlay the uh, device tree uh, binary uh, to the uh, under the Avio PCI device, then uh, all the platform device will be created uh, automatically. The driver will be uh, plugged automatically. So, so you don't really need a device tree node to do the overlay, right? We can fix this so that it works even on non-device tree platforms. Uh, sorry? You don't. You you just said you need a device tree node for the PCI device in order to do the overlay. Right. But we can fix that, right? That that's easy enough to make that work on a non-DT platform. Ultimately, you do need a node. Whether it's real or fake is the question. So, if you want to add device to children, you need a parent device that corresponds yeah, to the PCI device. device. But we'll we'll get to yeah, that on the last slide. Okay. Okay, so uh, the last uh, bullet is about the uh, uh, benefits uh, for using the device tree. So uh, the device tree obviously is very uh, popular in the Linux world uh, and it's uh, very successfully described all kinds of hardware. Uh, and also the FTP is very compatible format, so it won't use a lot of space in the FPJ image. Uh, and uh, uh, device tree also uh, provide a, a good infrastructure like uh, CSFS. We can uh, dump uh, all those things uh, at the wrong time. Um, and also in the FPJ world, is there is already uh, combined with the device tree to describe uh, FPJ region, which actually can be dynamically uh, programmed. So that's our use case. So we think uh, the device tree is uh, a good fit for our device. Thank you. Thanks, Lizzie. Um, the other use case, uh, market chip uh, folks, well, Bootland folks are working on uh, this device. Uh, my understanding of it is, okay, we have basically a standard SOC, a bunch of cores, a bunch of devices, PCI's host is also on it. <clears throat> Nothing unusual there. It's all described by device tree. Everything works. Um, but the same chip, you can essentially turn off the CPUs, uh, put use the PCIe as endpoint mode, and access all those uh, on-chip devices over PCIe directly. Um, So <clears throat> ignoring uh, ACPI for a second, how would we solve this on device tree? Well, that's uh, pretty straightforward, actually. Um, describing PCI and device trees has been supported uh, basically forever. Um, open firmware systems like power, uh, the firmware populates the DT with the PCI devices before it, get, it hands off to Linux. Um, in flattened device tree, PCI devices uh, in the DT are usually either something soldered down, um, and it's also generally uh, just small additions to the, to the DT, like, adding a MAC address for a Ethernet or Wi-Fi device, um, not a whole tree of devices behind it. Um, and this is also, but also the case of having a bus behind PCI is just ISA bus, really, which has also been supported forever. Um, and we have a way to dynamically add uh, onto device tree with DT overlays, and that's already supported on FPGA devices. 
with the FPGA uh, subsystem. So there, there were uh, two main issues to solve here. Um, one is that normally we don't have a node for D for PCI devices, um, and for one, the location may not be fixed. Uh, so the solution there is that we're generating uh, or can generate DT nodes for PCI devices as they're discovered. Uh, and that was added in 6.6. .6. Um, right now, it's a hidden uh, behind a kconfig option. Um, and long term, that needs to be runtime in some way. Uh, there was another issue with uh, address translation uh, from the the simple bus back to uh, the CPU's bus. Uh, the issue there was um, just in the DT uh, address translation logic and supporting uh, a format with three address cells, uh, which currently was just PCI before that. That's also uh, added in 6.6. .6. So we have a solution for DT. Um, what do we do for ACPI? Well, why not the same thing? Um, what are what are the gaps there? Um, we we need a, a base DT to apply the overlays to. Um, <laughs> we actually have that already um, with the DT unit test on any system. When that's run, we we have a base DT. Uh, right now, it's tied into to the unit test, uh, but there's also another use case uh, with K unit. Wanting um, Stephen Boyd was looking at adding uh, tests for the clock subsystem and, and needs to add uh, test DT nodes. So, um, so there's patches uh, that have been posted to to separate that out where you always have a a, a, a base DT. Also on uh, ARM64, you always have a DT because the boot interface to pass uh, the kernel command line and init RAM FS or is always via DT, even on ACPI. Uh, we need to have the uh, PCI device DT node to apply the overlay to. Well, we added that with uh, what I just talked about. Um, we need, and then, but we need a uh, post bridge node, and and that's the part that's missing. Um, what are some of the problems? Uh, uh, there's lots of assumptions uh, that we have either a DT node or an ACPI node. So what happens if a device has both. Um, and then the other issue is how do we uh, map interrupts, MSIs, IOMMU, uh, any translation there from DT space to ACPI space, kind of. I think there's kind of two options there. We keep generating resources in, D in the generated DT until things work. Um, or the other option is make the DT or the PCI device driver uh, that's doing all this, figure it out and do the right thing. Uh, what about, there's also D ACPI overlays. I'm told that's a debug feature um, currently at least. Uh, and it doesn't solve re reusing drivers. So, uh, questions?
I see skim through some of the chat. Uh, seems there's some agreement. Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, so I worked a bit on the microchip LAN stuff. And one of our problems that we had with issue that we have with uh, GT overlays is actually the dynamicity of um, PCI. You can plug and plug the device and so on. And there is actually uh, some ref counting on the device nodes, which are actually not used at all when you don't have a uh, config OF dynamic. <coughs> and also you don't have any ref counting of properties. So do you have any plans to address that or is is something that you encountered while testing that? Well, uh, node ref counting is such a mess. We should certainly add property ref counting to add to that. <laughs> uh, um, it, I'm, I'm not surprised there's issues there because it, it's the node ref counting is hard to get right. Um, and I don't know, other than we have to work through the issues and and solve that problem. That's a big reason why we haven't supported overlays with a generic interface to apply anything. It's the kernels can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for the, the, the ref counting issue, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I tried to fix quite some of them. Uh, and also on, um, on uh, creating the DT nodes for the PCI devices, I've got one, one issue. I have a local part I have to send uh, it upstream. It's related to the strict device. In fact, we're going to have some device with uh, the strict device and a uh, firmware node and an, o, an OF node attached to this strict device. <clears throat> Currently, in fact, when we create the, the, the OF node for the, for the PCI device, we, we do that with the overlay and we create a new strict device. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to reuse the existing one which was created by all the PCI system. to avoid a kind of duplication of a uh, strict device node. Yeah, offhand, that seems like that would make sense to me. Okay. I'm hearing some background discussion or something. Yeah, I think somebody's in a room. They need to mute their mic. Um, hey, Rob. Uh, so have you thought about how you discover the DT overlays? Um, is this UDEV kind of rules that pair a, a device to an overlay sitting in the file system somewhere? or? Is there a PCI config extension that, where you can put a DT fragment? Uh, that would be a problem for the the PCI driver to to load, find and load its uh, overlay. So in the FPGA case, I think uh, it's it's part of the FPGA image. So when you're programming the FPGA, you get the overlay and and then you load that. Um, and I think the rest yeah. of the FPGA subsystem uses the the firmware loading interface to to load the overlays. I think if we are going to do this, there's some stuff on this in the chat. Um, if we're going to have drivers around this, it will be helpful if someone defines the config space stuff, uh, maybe to point to a bar where you can read it from. Because with a bit of luck, everyone won't then have to reinvent the wheel. And there are ways of doing that. But someone needs to donate an ID. Wouldn't it depend on the hardware? Oh, sorry. 
Sorry. The, the option ROMs are there, right? You turn the option ROM bar on. The option ROM format has, you know, identifiers for the type of blocks in the option ROM. You could just define an overlay type in the option ROM. I mean, it, all that stuff is standardized already. Yeah. <laughs> option. option ROMs bring a whole pile of other rubbish that we really don't want to deal with. Yeah, uh, that no, no, no. Uh, as well. All the problems around hot bug, and the, the, they're not usable for many cases. I mean, it might work. There's nothing wrong with allowing that too. It assumes that it's uh, fixed as well, which is not the case for FPGAs. Yeah, that's, that's true as well. I mean, there is an assumption that it's not changing on you. Um, there's loads of ways we can solve it in a nice generic way. Oh, another op. For FPGAs, you can also just bake it into your bitstream, right? And have like a per driver fixed offset you read it from. I don't think that's crazy or or even, you know, not maintainable because you'll anyway have an FPGA specific way of loading it. And uh, the like a standard PCI thing doesn't work for that because like you don't necessarily take down the config space or something. So, um <laughs> There's loads of ways around that. Just put a mailbox in there. So what you're actually doing is pointing at either a DOE or something else, at which point you can put whatever you like behind it. There's a question on the chat uh, from Laurent. Uh, will x86 distros agree to ship a kernel with config OF equal yes? I don't have an answer. <laughs> build, build it, and they will SSDT. come. I don't know. There's SSDTs in in ACPI, right? I mean, what's the difference between that and the ACPI overlay? Just basically adding it in and ADRing it based on where it's at in the hierarchy, the PCI config hierarchy. That's the ACPI overlays, right? That's what they're loading. Um, they're worse. They're going to be uh, worse off on the ref counting, as I understand it, because there isn't any. Maybe it'll be better. <laughs> and yeah, when you consider the solution of the SCPI overlays, actually a lot of subsystems that are exposed by, uh, for instance, the microchip LAN card are not uh, supported. Uh, so you don't have SCPI support for such subsystem. So. We didn't consider this solution um, just because we would need to add SPI support to these subsystems. I think it was maybe we had some I2C, SPI, timers, clock. Uh, it, it's like a full stock system exposed through PCI, so which is not usually, usually done, let's say, with uh, SPI description. <laughs> I think time is up, Rob. Any last question for the audience? Anybody? It's always fun, ICPI, isn't it? So, <laughs> well, if the biggest discussion point was where we loaded the overlay from, I guess that's the win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.